Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to move on to actually creating our first model. Hopefully, um, you know, from the last session, you kind of feel confident with moving around the interface, adding in objects, um, uh, moving them around, scaling them and all that kind of stuff. So um, ready to actually create a model. So what we're actually going to create, first of all, um, get a picture, uh, is a model of this. <laughs> Uh, kind of like a facility kind of base kind of thing. Um, quite low poly, um, something that you might find in, you know, like an FPS or something. Um, you can imagine some guy running upstairs, hiding up here, sniping someone, um, or whatever it might be used for, you know. Um, th the great thing about 3D is that you can just create anything. Um, I've just picked something that is quite simple, quite boxy to get started. Um, but also quite usable um, and it will also teach us a lot of the fundamentals of um, actually creating 3D models so that's why I've picked this. Um, so to get started um, we look at our sort of primitives that we've used before and we think okay so the main bulk of this model is this you know the building itself this big boxy building so I'm obviously going to start with a box Okay, so I'm going to make this view larger. I'm going to get a box. I'm kind of going to ignore this grid for now, um, but I'm going to just draw this box um, around about the kind of size that it is in the image. Um, I need to go to my parameters. A bit wider. I'm going to set all these back to one. Just until you're happy, just eyeball it. We don't have any measurements here. Um, something that looks about right. Okay, I reckon that's about fine. Okay, so also generally um, when you're making something, when you make your first primitive uh, object to build from, um, see down the bottom here, you have the coordinates for where this object is in the like world space, okay? And at the moment, it's not quite central. Okay, so if you right click any of these up and down sliders, it sets them to zero or to its minimum. Okay, so I can see that zero, zero, zero in X, Y, and Z. So that's, um, you know, the object is bang center in the middle of the world space. Okay, um, the reason that's important is if we were going to export this into something else, so like a games engine that this might be going into, um, then we want the center of the object to be the same center when you load it into um, the other piece of software. Okay, otherwise the what's called the pivot point will be miles off somewhere else to one direction and it will make it difficult to work with. All right, anyway, so from here we want to start adding in detail. Now you could go ahead and add some segments in. So I could add in a load of segments until I've got a sort of section here um, that was where I wanted my door to be. Um, but that's not best practice because then you've got all these edges that you're not going to be using. Okay, they're, they're kind of worthless. So it's best to start with the minimum amount of segments that you can possibly get away with um, and then add them in manually, which is what we're going to do. Okay, because it's best practice, so we might as well start doing it from the beginning. So I can't add anything in manually here, I've got no uh, options to do so. So once I've got your prim my primitive shape made, I need to right click it, I need to convert it into what's called an editable poly. Okay, so convert to editable poly. All right, now you can see up here it says editable poly and I can drop that down um, and I've got access to lots more information. Um, let's quickly go through what these are. So vertex, so you can see when I've got that selected, so you can see these little blue dots in all of the corners. So any corner point of a model is going to have a vertex or a vertice, okay? Which you can select individually, um, and you can see I can start moving that around, uh, to start forming a shape. Uh, so undo that, Control Z obviously. I can select the edges, which, as we said before, are these. So I could, for example, just pull that down if I had like a sloped roof on a building or something. Um, border. At the moment, we can't select a border because this object doesn't have a border um, 
we'll come to using that though. Um, so we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. And then you've got polygon. Now each of these surfaces on a model um, are known as polygons. Okay, so you can select those individually. So like I could select the top polygon and move this up and down if I wanted to. You've also got elements. Um, now at the moment the, the whole model is an element. If you've got a model um, that's broken up into lots of sections, like one model broken up into small, lots of smaller things, you can select them as, or set them up as elements to make things easier to select. But again, we'll cross that bridge at a later date. For now, I want to go to edge because what I want to do is I want two edges down here, either side of this door, uh, so I can, and then an edge across the top. So I've got a sort of cut out of where this door is going to be. Okay, so in order to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to select this top edge and to select multiple things at once, hold down the control key and you can actually see next to the mouse, it turns into a plus. Um, and then I'm going to select the bottom edge. So I've got these two edges selected. You can see that. It's going to turn, press G to turn off the grid, get out of the way. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here and you'll notice now that instead of just parameters, I've got absolutely tons of tools that I can use here. Um, it can be overwhelming at first, to be honest, because there's just so much. Um, but, you know, don't let that bother you. Most of the stuff you won't need for some sort of basic use. Um, but once you start getting familiar with what things do, everything kind of starts to make sense. Anyway. What we're going to use first of all is this one called connect. Okay, because what that's going to do, and I'll show you if I click it, it's made me an edge here, which is between the two edges I had selected already. All right, so I had the top and bottom selected, I've pushed connect and it's made a connection right in the middle of that selection. All right, so I now can move this just in the X axis, constrained to the X axis, because if I had it like that, it's going to start going all funny, which we don't want. I'm going to move it over to the left hand side of that door, which would be, yeah, around there. It's fine. Again, we're eyeballing it because we don't have actual, me actual measurements. So again, top and bottom. Push connect again. Gives me another line. And now I can move that one into place. Say about there. Okay. Around. So obviously now I want a line over between these two going that way. So I need to select those two edges and connect between those two. Um, probably a bit low. That'll be about fine. Okay, so I now have a cutout for the door. Um, so what I want to do is now this section needs to be pushed inwards. Okay, so in order to do that, I'm going to go to Polygon. Um, and I'm going to select this polygon, which is where my door is. Okay, and the next tool we're going to learn is this one called Extrude. Okay, now this time instead of just clicking uh, Extrude here, what I could do is click it, which will turn it on, and I can manually push this back or outwards if I needed to. Okay, that's not what I'm going to do. I'm going to show you another way of doing things. This little dialog box, if you click that, let's just move it over there. You can see that you get um, some more options to do this more sort of manually. Um, so that wants to come in about this far. Okay, and if you're happy, push the tick and it will apply it. Um, you can see it's caused a bit of a problem where I've got an overlap on the floor there. It's fine because we want to delete that anyway. So I'm going to delete that polygon. Push the delete key. If you push backspace, it's, it's not going to work. Okay, it's the delete key on the keyboard. <laughs> delete something. And then again, that base we're going to delete. It will mean we've got a hole in the bottom here, which is fine because now I can show you what this border will do. So now that I've got like a, an, a hole in my model, I can select border and it will select that whole border of edges. Okay, that's now a border. 
um, a nice quick fix. I can come over here in the border mode. You've got an option called cap. Um, and you can see that just caps the base. So I've got a floor still. Okay, grand. So already just using the connect tool and the extrude tool, um, I now have a cutout for the door. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll quickly do the same thing again uh, for where the window is going to be, just using exactly the same tools I did before. All right, so select the edges, want a connection between. This time I'm going to get the dialog box for connect because I'm actually going to turn it up to two because I know that I want two edges. Uh, you can also sort of pinch and slide those around uh, if you want to do it that way, but I find it easier to just move things into place. So I've got two edges there. Uh, that'll be fine. Okay, so again, I need two edges between there. So I've got my two edges. There we go. Um, the top edge wants to be in line with the top of the door. So what I can do here is just come to my front view make that full screen and I can get a view so that's the top of my door there and I know that needs to be about in line with it so that looks about right come back to perspective uh, that needs to be a bit higher there you go it says there's the cutout for the window get to polygon get my extrude option I'll do this manually this time and goes in about the same distance as the door does, so about to there. Okay, remember to turn things off when you finish doing them. So the extrude is still turned on. So if I accidentally selected something else, I'm going to have a problem up here. So turn it off so you don't accidentally do anything. Okay, and then you've got your building with a nice cutout for the door and a cutout for the window. All right. So it's a good start. Um, we've already learned a couple of tools. We've made some progress on actually building something. Um, and just in case you wanted to know, you, you'll randomly get assigned a color, as I said before. But over here, you can see where the option is to change that. So change it to a bit of a nicer color to work with. And there you have it. So you can save that up for now. And we'll move on in the next video.